Hello, good morning to everyone connecting from BC uh, and good afternoon to our panelists connecting from sunny and warm Santiago. Uh, welcome to the webinar uh, doing business in Chile, uh, Canada's free trade agreements with Chile and business opportunities for BC companies. Uh, my name is Ganna Drost, I'm manager at the Trade Policy and Negotiations Branch, BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. I'm joined today by my colleague Ben Kaliznik, senior manager at the same branch. And before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from the territories of the Likwangan speaking peoples, the Esquimalt and Sangiz First Nations, whose historical relationship with the land continues to this day. So today's webinar, Doing Business in Chile, opens up a series of webinars on free trade agreements that Canada has in South America and market opportunities that exist for British Columbian companies like you. So I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, our agenda and speakers for today's webinar. The webinar will last approximately one hour and 30 minutes, and uh, we will start with a presentation on Canada's bilateral free trade agreement with Chile and the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, then we will move on to a discussion about export opportunities and key sectors in the Chilean market. And this discussion will be led by Carlos Rojas Arbulo, Councillor and Senior Trade Commissioner at the Embassy of Canada in Chile and his team of Trade Commissioners. Marie-Hélène Jacques, Marie René Plouffe uh, and Patricio Canette. So both presentation and discussion will last approximately 20 minutes each. And then we will move to the presentation we'll on support to Canadian exporters available through Canada's Export Credit Agency. Uh, this presentation will be delivered by Christian Darock, Senior Regional Manager at Export Development Canada. Uh, we will conclude today's presentations with a talk by Pablo Herrera, President of the Canada-Chile Chamber of Commerce, who will speak to the development uh, of commercial relations and business opportunities between our two countries. Uh, we have reserved uh, approximately 20-25 minutes for Q&A session, uh, which today will take place in breakout rooms. So you will receive a link uh, to join breakout rooms via email uh, and in the chat uh, towards the end of the webinar. Please note that you may still send uh, your questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen uh, to raise questions at any time during the webinar. But please try to be as specific as you can and indicate if possible who you are directing your questions to. So in the interest of... Um, of time, uh, we might uh, also take uh, some of those questions to, to the breakout rooms. So this session is being recorded and presentations will be made available in a post-event email. And uh, if you experience any problems with audio uh, or other technical issues, please send an email, uh, a message to Ben or, or myself using the chat function. So uh, let's start with the uh, introduction to Canada's free uh, trade agreements with uh, Chile. And uh, before we do so, just a few words about the branch uh, I work at. Uh, the Trade Policy and Negotiations branch uh, represents BC interests in both international and domestic free trade agreements negotiations, as well as in trade disputes that affect BC. Uh, we also run consultations with the BC businesses and stakeholders to better understand your interests and communicate them to the federal government who leads the international trade negotiations. As, as a heads up, you might hear from us soon on those. And of course, uh, our branch uh, also does free trade agreement outreach uh, sessions like this webinar to ensure that the information on how to take advantage of these agreements is widely known. So here is a quick uh, overview of my presentation. Uh, I'll start off with the welcoming remarks by our Minister of State for Trade, and I'll talk about Canada's free trade agreements and uh, uh, the Canada-Chile uh, FTA and the CPTPP agreement, and then uh, a few opportunities that, offer, that these agreements offer to companies like you. And as this is our uh, introductory webinar, uh, I'll also cover uh, some tools and support that is available to, to BC exporters. 
So uh, the BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation aims to make life more affordable for British Columbians by building a strong, sustainable economy uh, and improve the standard of living. Uh, there are many ways to foster uh, the uh, economic recovery and growth. And one way is to encourage you businesses to leverage the opportunities found in free trade agreements and diversify your export uh, markets. And this is our job today. So with this, I I'd like to kick it off with a short welcome video from the Minister of State for Trade, who will explain what support is available to you. Hello, I'm George Chow, Minister of State for Trade. I'm pleased to add my support and welcome you to this session. The goal for this session is to share the benefits and opportunity of Canada's domestic and international free trade agreements, and to ensure that everyone in BC's diverse regions, communities, and sectors receive the information needed. Free trade agreements help open new markets as well as advance and protect BC's competitive advantages. They are a critical part of attracting new investment into BC's regions. They apply to all sectors of the economy, including forestry, agricultural, intellectual property, clean tech, and mining, to name just a few. I'm proud to say that last year, we held close to 50 information sessions like this one with approximately 1,500 participants covering all of BC's regions. We have also held sessions for Indigenous businesses and women-owned businesses. Now, because of COVID-19, we are continuing the webinars, and my hope is we can resume in-person sessions when the time is right. The COVID-19 pandemic has made international trade much more challenging for the foreseeable future. Thankfully, the very good news is Canada has 14 free trade agreements covering 51 countries, including a new Canada-US-Mexico agreement and agreement with the European Union, Japan, Korea, and many others that, if used correctly, can help lower your costs and provide much needed certainty in these uncertain times. Free trade agreements are complex. My staff are here today to help you understand how they work. I want to ensure that you are supported as you plan for the future. We're also offering help with export and trade readiness through our Export Navigator program. And we have in-market experts and other resources available in Canada that you will hear about today. I wish you all a successful info session. Thank you. Canada has uh, a first mover advantage and to this day uh, has secured 15 free trade agreements that cover uh, 49 countries along with two domestic trade agreements. So there were some changes in numbers uh, since the minister's video was, was recorded. So that those agreements give you access to nearly 90% of export markets or about 1.5 billion potential consumers worldwide. And free trade uh, agreements have different coverage and some cover only goods, while others cover trade in goods, services, financial services, investment, government procurement, temporary entry for business people. And these are usually the later trade agreements such as USMA or the CETA, the uh, Canada-European Union Comprehensive Economic Trade Agreement, Canada-South Korea Trade Agreement or the CPTPP. A few older agreements that have undergone a series of modernizations and also have an extended coverage and Canada-Chile free trade agreement is one of them. And on this slide, you can see that uh, some free trade agreements overlap. And the good news for you is that you can choose under which free trade agreement you want to claim preferential terms of trade. And this is not the case for Chile yet, but Chile and Canada have a bilateral free trade agreement in place and both Canada and Chile are parties to the CPTPP, although Chile has not ratified it yet. And in addition to that, a few years ago, uh, the discussions started around a free trade agreement between Canada and Pacific Alliance, to which Chile is party to. So potentially at some point in, in the future, you'll need to decide under which free trade agreement with Chile you want to claim preferential treatment. 
And this overlap of free trade agreements will also give you more flexibility and additional benefits. So now uh, let's take a deeper dive into the Canada-Chile Free Trade Agreement or the CCFTA. Uh, let's start with uh, some not so widely known but uh, important facts. So the CCFTA uh, entered into force back in 1997 and it was special for several reasons. So first, it is Canada's first free trade agreement in South America. And second, it was uh, Chile's first comprehensive free trade agreement with any country. And it was also modeled on the, on the NAFTA, so on the uh, predecessor of USMA. The agreement uh, was subject to a series of updates, including more, uh, more uh, tariff phase out periods for select products and uh, updated rules of origin. Uh, there was a government procurement chapter that was added, a chapter on financial services. Uh, there was updated dispute settlement mechanism and customs procedures chapter as well. Uh, there were several uh, modernizations uh, of provisions on sanitary and phytosanitary measures, um, as well as technical barriers to trade. So today, uh, Canada is an important trading partner for uh, Chile. It supplies 14% uh, of Chile's uh, imports of cereals, 15% of, uh, of its imports of vegetable oil, and 22% uh, of Chile's imports of leguminous vegetables. So a few years ago, uh, Francois-Philippe uh, Champagne, uh, in his speech in Santiago at the Canada-Chile Chamber of Commerce, uh, said that Canada and Chile may be at uh, opposite ends of uh, the American continent, but uh, we are both Pacific nations resisting uh, the tide of protectionism. And it is even more so true for, for BC. BC ranks uh, number four among Canadian provinces exporting to Chile. And uh, since 1997, uh, we have more than doubled our exports there. And uh, due to our geographical location, our maritime route to Chilean market uh, is also the shortest compared to other provinces. So the key BC exports include uh, bituminous coal, minerals, machinery, and some growing trends are seen in food preparations, pet food, and also specialized machinery and its components. So uh, now let's uh, briefly see what opportunities the CCFTA offers to BC exporters of goods. It is useful to note uh, that Chile's most uh, favored nations tariffs are a flat 6%, except uh, on some agricultural products. And at the time of entry into force, the CCFTA provided duty-free access to 75% uh, of Canadian exports to Chile. And there were also cuts, uh, further tariff cuts uh, in subsequent uh, tariff phase outs. So on this slide, you can see some tariffs that have been eliminated for agri-food and agricultural goods, fish and seafood and forestry products and some minerals. And some products, as you can see, still face tariffs today, for example, dairy, uh, meat and some food preparations. So very important point here is that uh, if you wish to take advantage of the preferential tariff treatment under Canada-Chile uh, FTA or any other free trade agreement, you need to claim it. So Chilean customs authorities will not assume that your product qualifies for 0% tariff just because it was shipped by a Canadian company or from Canada. And uh, happy to, to talk about it uh, in more details in a, in a breakout room at the end of the webinar. So in today's new age uh, of free trade agreements and benefits for trade go just beyond the effect of lower tariffs. And FTAs, they provide greater certainty and reduce perceived business risk while making doing business more transparent and predictable for you. Since uh, signing its free trade agreement with Canada in, back in 1997, uh, Chile has significantly expanded the, uh, its network of free uh, trade agreements with other countries like Mexico, the United States, European Union, China, South Korea, CPTPP countries, Mercosur. And of course, the uh, CCFTA was instrumental for Canada at the beginning, but it also continues to provide BC and Canadian exporters with a level playing field with other competitors in the Chilean market. 
and uh, the modernization exercises uh, that the agreement has undergone, they uh, brought even more coverage and greater certainty for doing business. Additional chapters, for example, on financial services allow um, access to markets for cross-border uh, provision of financial services and for investment in financial institutions. Uh, modernization uh, or modernized access uh, to government procurement includes provisions for electronic tendering, which was not the case back in uh, when the agreement was signed. And uh, speaking of the government procurement uh, under the CCFTA, so under this agreement, Canada and Chile agreed to a negative list approach, which means that the agreement covers the procurement uh, of all goods and services unless otherwise uh, specified. And the list of entities that are covered are central and regional uh, governments for Chile, as well as the port authorities. So in the table on this slide, you can see the approximate thresholds and thresholds, they give you an idea about the amount the procurement contract has to be above so that it can be bid on by a Canadian company under uh, the CCFTA. Uh, you can see uh, they are pretty low for procurement by central government and regional government compared to other Canada's free trade agreements. And uh, the caveat on the thresholds that uh, are on this slide is that they are rounded uh, and converted uh, in Canadian dollars for, uh, for your convenience only. And the contracts that you'll see on the Chilean procurement platforms, so they will be in Chilean peso, and I'm sure that Carlos and his team will be able to, to assist you with that. So now uh, let's uh, take a look at the comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, agreement to which Chile is party to. So the CPTPP is one of Canada's most recently implemented free trade agreement. It entered into force uh, at the end of 2018 for the majority of its members. And now it's in force for eight members. Um, so Canada, Australia, Japan, Mexico, New Zealand, Singapore, Vietnam, and Peru. So Chile has still to, to ratify this agreement. And uh, once Chile ratifies the CPTPP, uh, the agreement will provide preferential market access uh, that uh, follows similar modernized trade rules as the CCFTA does. And it will give you uh, and other Canadian exporters greater flexibility in terms of using inputs from the CPTPP members. So on investment, uh, the CPTPP will allow BC and Canadian companies to invest with greater confidence in Chile and offer protections from unfair and discriminatory uh, treatment, as well as greater predictability and uh, transparency. So new commitments on uh, temporary entry of business people will also make it easier for you to temporarily move high-skilled uh, professionals and technicians to, to Chile. And uh, yeah, basically on, this is just a high level overview of some benefits that uh, the CPTPP will provide to uh, Canadian companies once Chile, uh, in the Chilean market, once Chile ratifies this agreement. Uh, but there are many, uh, many other advantages and uh, I just have to curtail this in the, in the interest of time. So uh, now let's uh, have a quick look at uh, the tools and uh, trade support services that could be uh, of use to you uh, for doing business in Chile or other international markets. So on this slide, uh, you can see the tool called Canada's Tariff Finder. Uh, it is a very useful tool that will help you to see the uh, tariffs for uh, that your products face in Chile or other markets where Canada has free trade agreements. So this is a really user-friendly tool and uh, all you need is the market of interest and the harmonized systems code or keyword for your product to get started. So this tool will uh, tell you the rate under a uh, free trade agreement, whether there are any phase outs and how the rate compares to the rate uh, that the country applies to products from countries it doesn't have a uh, free trade agreement with. So BC has a network of trade and investment representatives that are located worldwide. And uh, you might know from your own experience uh, that is sometimes it can be tough to know what's going on in a market halfway across the globe and let alone connecting with the, someone you can trust to do business with. 
And that is why our network of VC trade and investment representatives shown on this map uh, now has grown up to uh, 16 offices covering all our major markets. And uh, the goal of the trade representatives is to help international businesses discover the benefits of British Columbia as a destination for investment and also a partner for trade and innovation. Uh, but it is also, the, the aim is also to help you, VC businesses, contact potential buy buyers or investors or other players in global markets. And in some markets, as it is the case for South America, for example, we don't have trade representatives and uh, we rely on Canada's trade commissioner service. So just a quick slide before I give floor uh, to the Trade Commissioner Service in Chile. So this is another trade support program I'd like uh, to highlight. So it is called uh, BC Expert Navigator Program. Unlike uh, the uh, Trade and Investment Representative Network, BC Expert uh, Navigator Advisors are located closer to home. And uh, this program offers you access to uh, community-based expert specialists who will provide uh, a personalized and step-by-step -step approach um, to exploring and help connect you to market information, expert programs or financial services, and again, business development experts. So these advisors, they are specifically uh, geared towards assisting those of you based in BC regions, as opposed to lower mainland or capital region areas. So this map shows that uh, where the, serv the services are provided by the advisors. And the program also has advisors that work specifically with women, indigenous and youth owned businesses. So I'll wrap my presentation here. I hope it, it was not too, too technical. And uh, I will close by saying that uh, we continue to support people and businesses in the uh, recovery from the pandemic by assisting with leveraging opportunities in Canada's free trade agreements. And if this is something that you are considering, be it in uh, South America, Asia, Europe, or other markets, uh, please contact me and I'll make sure that uh, you get the information and assistance you need. So now without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Carlos Rojas Arbulo and his team for discussion of key yes. sections and expert opportunities in the Chilean market. So Carlos, over to you. Well, let me, let me first start by thanking you and thanking the government of British Columbia for this opportunity to have a conversation with ex exporters from BC uh, regarding Chile, the Chilean context, opportunities for doing business, and, and frankly, Canada's place in this country. And uh, second, I find that your presentation was quite complete, so I, I will try to adapt as I go and perhaps offer comments and offer uh, a little bit more context with regards to some of the latest and more, more recent um, events that uh, are important for exporters to, to know about as they embark on um, doing business in, in this country. Um, and I'd like to start this by first actually introducing um, the the embassy team. Uh, we do have a number of people on the call, and you've you've um, mentioned their names. But once again, if I can ask my colleagues to put their camera, um, we have uh, Marie-Hélène Jacques, who um, is is a trade commissioner and um, recently arrived in Santiago. We have. Uh, uh, René Plouf as well, uh, one of our trade commissioners, uh, and Patricio Cañete, who is uh, one of our trade commissioners as well. And um, we're, we're all part of the same team. So EDC is co-located with the embassy. And I know that Christian Rock, who's managing the EDC portfolios, will have an opportunity to expand on what EDC is doing in Chile. Uh, and myself, um, I'm also recently arrived, uh, three months now, in Santiago, although uh, with the team for about five months, and I manage the commercial and investment program. And in government lingo, we call ourselves, uh, in my case, senior trade commissioner um, and counselor. So um, perhaps taking a bit of a step back, it's important for you to know that we have a long 
history of, um, of relations with Chile. Uh, we are celebrating 80 years of diplomatic relations, but we know that way before that, there were other people to people's exchanges, of course. Um, but I'd say, and I have to agree with uh, what Ghana was indicating, that the, in, in terms of the economic relation, the FTA has been uh, fundamental, instrumental. And this year, we're cele celebrating 20, 25 years since then. And as it was noted before, the growth of our bilateral trade has quadrupled in the last 25 years. Now, $2.6 billion of bilateral trade, which is not insignificant if you compare it to other markets in the region. And if you look at how that growth has taken place over the last uh, several decades. So we're, we're excited about that because it means that this year we're going to try to do our best to highlight some of those uh, emerging opportunities to celebrate not only uh, where we see eye to eye, but of course, try to offer you and other Canadian companies uh, the best advice that we can to um, enter this market and, and work with Canadian and with, work with Chilean companies. Um, I, I'm not going to get into the different sectors of exports and imports because I know that Ghana covered that simply to say that currently Chile is exporting more to Canada than we're exporting to Chile by, by about $600 million, so 1.6 of exports to Canada versus about a billion or so, a little under a billion for exports to Chile. Um, and certainly there's a lot of potential for growth because we believe that this is a mature relationship, but at the same time, one where it is easy enough to do business. Uh, there, is a, there is a long tradition of, of doing business and trading in this country. Uh, some of you might have read, of course, that this country uh, as in Canada, is a trading nation, and uh, as in Canada, has exploited, of course, their natural resources, and hence the reason why they're also big on, on um, not just on the agricultural side, of course, but uh, exploiting resources uh, on the mining sector. And, and that connects me to also that important presence, which is part, I guess, of the Canadian uh, connection to Chile, the important presence of our Canadian investors in Chile. If you look at the Canadian statistics, right now we're looking at $22 billion of investment, $23 billion. Uh, certainly if you ask the Chilean authorities, they'll give you a, a number that is much larger than that, but um, independently of that, it's still a very large number. Currently 50% or so it's in the mining sector, but then you get into the energy sector, in financial services, um, financial sector, excuse me, infrastructure, and I think I mentioned energy as well, which are the other big, big pieces of, of this investment. But if we also look at it from the other perspective, Chile has also significantly invested in Canada. They have currently $1.4 billion of investment. So my point here is that both on trade and on investment, it's a, it's a, a, a long uh, history uh, relationship in terms of a relationship. Um, there's one where there's a, 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 certainly a level of maturity and one that has a really favorable perspectives for, for growth. Getting a little bit into why Chile versus a number of other countries, because we very much understand, of course, that we live in a, in a competitive world and, and you as other companies has to look for where to get the most out of, it, of your investment. Um, it's certainly, uh, you know, Chile has, if, if, if we look at uh, the region, uh, has been a country of stability. Uh, there's a certain level of institutional stability over the last several decades. Granted, you might say in the last little while, there have been uh, a certain uh, number of issues like the estallido social in the, I guess the translation would be the social explosion or yeah, that's sort of aligned a with the translation. And, um, but that, that social unrest that took that took place in 2019, plus the um, uh, pandemic, hasn't really stopped this country from, from really um, maintaining its place in the region. Um, Ghana mentioned it, their openness to international trade. They also have 30 plus FTAs across the world. Um, they, they play, I, uh, we believe, a, a preferential 
place within within Latin America. And frankly, that is the reason also why uh, Chile is, if not the number one destination for investments in, in South America, but I but I believe as well in Latin America, um, but if not the first, um, among the first. So um, in this openness of doing business and of, and of um, opening to international trade, you should also know that via Chile or through Chile, you can access some other platforms uh, within the region, including uh, you know Mercosur, Mercosur as a trading block, and there are some elements there that we can get into a little bit later in our conversation. But I guess what I'm saying is is, is truly trying to reinforce some of the messages that Ghana uh, already noted, and um, um, as I said, in spite of the fact that the pandemic and the estallido social played a super important role in this country uh, in the last years and including today, I, we trust and we believe, and this is our read, that um, the country is headed in a, in, a, in a good direction. I did want to perhaps add just one more piece, which is about context. And I think it's important for you for you to be aware as well, not just on the specific opportunities on your sectors of interest, but a couple of things. This estallido social that I was mentioning about, you know, social arrest in, in 2019, um, I guess, uh, you know, a bit of a reflection of some of the inequalities of this, of this country, because on the one hand, very modern, lots of infrastructure, lots of growth, stability, as I mentioned before, open to business. But on the other hand, among the OECD country, countries, Chile is one of those countries that is uh, where you can see some important inequalities. And I think that's, that's something that should be mentioned. Progress is being made, of course, but it is a long-term long project. And, and with that comes, of course, uh, what has that social unrest meant going forward, which then links to the next thing that I wanted to say, which is you will have seen that we have now an incoming administration that will take take over in on in March uh, on March 11th. It's a it's a it's a government, you know, to the left, and and I guess mo moderating their views and their perspectives, so moving a little bit more to the center, but still to the left. And um, that has raised some concerns by, by, by companies, by investors from, from Canada and from other countries about uh, that openness, right? And that, and that track record that they have in terms of stability, in terms of opportunities for, for doing business internationally. And if you, if you start looking at a little bit of the signals that have come out, you'll see that there's a, there's a moderation on, on, on how the incoming government is trying to position herself. And two examples of that is the new minister of, or rather the incoming minister of finance is the, I guess, the, uh, the outgoing uh, head of the central bank, which is frankly a reassuring measure for, for those that are watching uh, the economy and, and, and trade and investment. And two, if you look at the cabinet, Certainly, there's a generational change because you have a lot of individuals that are in their 30s and their 40s and you know early 50s, but also uh, moderation and diversity. And I think that's telling of the changing world, but it's also telling of how perhaps Chile is progressive in, in, in their ways and in their views. And frankly, we've seen very favorably that, um, uh, you know, that signal. And, uh, and, and of course, um, uh, very, uh, very keen on 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 seeing this feminist approach that the incoming administration is is taking. Uh, I believe is sixty three percent or so, or a little bit more, of women being named to cabinet. Very capable, very experienced, um, and so, so solid choices. And and perhaps um, you know one last thing would be how Chile has managed the pandemic. Uh, very early on, investments were made in purchasing uh, vaccines from across the from China, but also uh, I, I now from across uh, the world and, and from the U.S. and others. And uh, they are in their fourth round of vaccination. They put in place a number of restrictions throughout the last you know year and a half that puts Chile in a in a um, per, perhaps not in a favorable position, but in a better position vis-a-vis -a, -vis a number of their of their um, uh, 
countries in the region. So, so those two items, right? The three items, the estallido social, the incoming new government and the COVID, um, to me and to us speaks to how Chile is um, um, certainly um, um, taking action on a number of, of key issues, is demonstrating progressive views, is in the midst of this generational change as, as the government moves from, from the Piñera government into the new government. And again, a re reassuring, reassuring measures with respect to, to how they would like to pursue um, business and, and, and continue to attract investment. So I, I'd like to end by, by perhaps just saying a few things about how we uh, are uh, looking at the sectors of opportunity. And as you might have heard in other conversations with, um, with uh, uh, other embassies across the world, we also look at some of the priority and some of the sectors of focus. And I know that my colleagues and I will get into some of the specifics during the Q and A's and during the um, section, uh, the breakout rooms. So um, I'm simply going to outline what 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 we can get into a little bit later from the presentations. So we're absolutely keeping an eye on, you know, as I said, the mining sector, infrastructure, services, and capital projects, clean tech, education sector. Uh, and a horizontal sector, of course, responsible business conduct that we used to call corporate social responsibility, but as well as se sectors of focus such as agriculture and agri-food, uh, aerospace and defense, forestry, ICT, and issues that relate to market access and SPS. And important to note, and I make the link to what Ghana was saying earlier, when we talk, when we talk about trade policy, we are actually keeping our eye on a number of different uh, conversations, uh, some of which were mentioned related to, you know, CTPPP, uh, of course, the current uh, FTA, the um, the, uh, the alliance with some of the other uh, countries in South America, and I think that is um, a whole set of, of 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 dialogue and engagement and economic diplomacy that go, goes on kind of behind the scenes to try to position our message, position Canada's message, and consequently try to position our companies. So there is a, a, a true value uh, added and importance to those exchanges that happen perhaps beyond the, the strict transaction between companies and exporters and buyers. And the embassy at this stage is trying to engage early the government in some of, um, with respect to the inner circle of the incoming administration and is also engaging in a conversation with respect to some of these trade policy related um, uh, related um, um, thematics or related related points. So um, I will uh, perhaps um, stop there. I, I, I know that I've briefly introduced some members of the team. I, I failed to say that in total, we are 12 members of the team, including our colleagues from EDC that are co-located with our embassy. We, close, we work very closely with the political section as well, and we work very closely with our ambassador, who's obviously our, uh, our, our leader here in terms of representation. And, and frankly, um, we're there for you and to support you. And, and if there's anything that we can do to advance the conversation, uh, either now or subsequently, we'll be happy to do so. So I'll leave it at that, Gana. Thank you for the opportunity and looking forward to the other piece of the conversation uh, on more specifics. Thanks so much, Carlos. Thanks for this uh, for the introduction of uh, of the opportunities of the key sectors and uh, and of your team. Uh, I already see there are some questions that uh, are coming through Q and A Q &A section, and uh, your members of the team are already answering them. So I just wanted to encourage the audience to keep those questions coming, uh, and also to remind you that uh, we'll have breakout rooms at the end of the webinar. Uh, so please monitor your emails as well, as uh, you will soon receive a link uh, that will allow you to join uh, the breakout rooms at the end. But we are still here, and uh, now I'm uh, happy to uh, to pass the floor to Christian uh, Darok, uh, the uh, senior uh, manager, the senior regional manager for Export Development Canada in Chile for his portion of the presentation. So Christian, over to you, and I'm about to share your uh, presentation here.
Thank you, Ghana, for inviting EDC Chile to, 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 to present today. We'll do a, a quick uh, presentation. I'm, I'm, I'm based in Chile and I, I, I manage the, the Chilean office. Um, so um, next slide, please. So basically, EDC was created uh, as a crown corporation in, in, in 1944 and we're the, we're the Canadian Trade Agency of Canada. Our main mandate is to support Canadian um, suppliers and investors uh, to go and, and, and grow in internationally. That is, this is our main mandate. Uh, if you go to the next one, um, Ghana, please. Um, so basically our, our core business is to provide financing and insurance solutions uh, to, fac to facilitate the international trade. Uh, Additionally, we have some free of charge services that are, uh, these are two programs. One of them is called Market Knowledge. Um, and also we have the Connection program uh, that I will describe later on. Next one, please. So EDC, um, we're part of the lar of a, of a larger uh, ecosystem where we, the main intention is to support Canadian exports. Uh, in the public sector, we, we partnered with, the, with, the, with, T, with uh, TCS, of course, our main partner, but also with provincial government like uh, BC. In, uh, in some, in sometimes we also partnered with uh, BDC based in Vancouver. This is a, a corporation, also a crown corporation that is focused on early stages in companies. So they provide venture capital for startups. Uh, we also partnered with the CCC that they mainly manage the the government to government contracts and we are there to finance those contracts in case some governments, foreign governments uh, want to do so. Um, sorry for that, I have another problem with my computer. <laughs> No, it's okay, sorry about that. Uh, on, in the private sector, we also partner with uh, commercial banks and insurance companies uh, across Canada. So these are the ecosystem where we navigate and we're one of the pieces to support uh, the Canadian trade. Next one, please. Some numbers uh, for you to know about EDC. We serve, um, every year we serve more or less 24,000 Canadian clients. 65% uh, of them are Canadian uh, medium-sized enterprises. And um, also we conducted close to 10,000 transactions or deals uh, last year in order to support uh, those clients. Uh, we also have some special programs that we're really proud of and they are new to DC. We have a specific programs where we support clean tech companies uh, also women-led or own businesses and also indigenous business. So in those three special programs, we uh, facilitated deals for up to 7 billion in the last few years. And in, in, in these particular cases, we're also able to offer equity um, to help them to advance their business. Next one, please. Probably this is the more relevant uh, slide uh, for today. These are, these are our programs. Uh, the first one is financing. Um, the idea here is, is to provide access to capital for you to fund your investment, uh, working capital, and, um, and also inventory. So basically, some example here could be um, we provide guarantee for up to 100% for your bank, I mean, to your bank, so they can issue performance bonds or letter of credits for your international contracts. Another example is, is our bank guarantee um, solution that uh, basically we provide 100% of guarantee again to your bank so they can issue a line of credit or a loan for you in order that, uh, in order that uh, you can escalate your business and go internationally. Another example is the buyer financing. Basically, uh, in cases where your international buyer asks you for financing, for vendor financing, we we are able to do that on your behalf. And typically we finance up to 85% of the value of the contract. The second program I would like to highlight is the insurance program. 
the credit insurance. This is the typical risk mitigation tool. Basically, here we can we're able to secure your account receivables or export sales for up to 90% of the total on a single name basis or portfolio basis, and, and also allow you to enter into, I mean, to offer to your international clients payment terms for up to 360 days. Um, the, the third program is the knowledge program. This is relatively new uh, to DC. Uh, here, we the objective is to help you to make informed decisions when you when you consider to enter into new into new foreign markets. Basically, we, we have um, tools, information, reports at your disposal in our website, external website, uh, so you can access that. It's very easy to, to register. It's free of charge. That is important always. And also, you can attend to our webinars around different topics and markets. Uh, the last program, also not new, and this has been in place for a few years, is the connection program. Here, basically, we uh, our objective is to connect you with our uh, 22 international buyers uh, that are present in that participate in the key sector of the economy, mainly forestry, mining, infrastructure, retail, and agri food. Next one, please. So uh, this is our presence. Our our headquarters is in Ottawa, but we have 20 regional offices across Canada including the one that is relevant to you, which is uh, Vancouver office. Uh, we also have 21 international representations, including the one in Chile, the one that I, I live. And also we have offices in other offices in, in Latin America, um, like those in Peru, Colombia, Mexico, and, and Brazil. Next one, please. This one, yes. So the, the Chile the Chile office is quite active. Uh, we're lucky that all of uh, the EDC programs, products and solutions are active and open in Chile. Um, as an example, last year we supported um, 360 Canadian clients in, in this country uh, from several sectors and, and from several provinces as well. Next one. Sibupli. On the, on the on the connection program, this is the fourth uh, program I, I mentioned before. Uh, Chile is the country that has uh, probably the most uh, number of uh, uh, international relationships. We have seven out of the 22 that I explained before. And those are mainly around these main two clusters we have in Chile, the mining and forestry. You can see here relevant names, Codelco, Escondida, BHP, Arauco, CNPC. Basically, the, uh, we do have um, we have a MOU with them uh, where they they do the best uh, the best effort to to consider Canadian suppliers, and these companies are leading companies in their sectors and have a large capex, um, opex, and, and 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 relevant spend in technology and, and innovation. Uh, so the objective again for this uh, program is to connect you with with these corporations in case there is a good fit between your solution and their uh, short-term and medium-term uh, procurement needs. So this is a very focused program and typically here we try to advance uh, the sector of the future in Canada like uh, agri-food, clean tech, advanced technologies and also digital business. Next one, please. Just to complete my presentation, um, the, uh, for, the, for the financing and insurance program, I, the best way for you is to connect directly with the Vancouver office. There, they will be assigning to you uh, an account manager that will help you to navigate uh, through the different programs and services. For the market knowledge, as I said, it's relatively easy um, to register uh, online and you can have access to the different events that we also organize in partnership with GAC or the, the provincial government. And finally, for the connection opportunities and those uh, based in Chile, like, like the seven I mentioned before, you can, you, you can always contact us in Chile at any time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian. Thanks for, for your presentation. That, that was great. I think it provided an overview for the participants of the services that Expert Development Canada 
uh, can uh, can provide to them and uh, how it can assist them to be to be successful uh, in the international markets. So now, without further ado, we have one more presentation. Uh, so I'm pleased to uh, to introduce Pablo Herrera, President of Canada Chile uh, Chamber of Commerce, for his portion of presentation before we uh, move into the breakout rooms. Uh, so Pablo, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and, and hello, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be today with you and uh, share with you what, what the Chilean Canadian Chamber of Commerce is in Chile. Um, this is a short corporate presentation, and I'm happy to answer questions in the, in the breakout sessions. So briefly, um, our chamber is, is, as you can imagine, is a nonprofit organization. We have more than 20 years in, in Chile in the market. Uh, we have more than 100 corporate members. Um, our main mission is, uh, as you see there, to promote the progressive development of business and relations between Chile and Canada. Um, there's a couple of remarkable um, uh, uh, relations between Canada and Chile. One is what we just have uh, spoken this this morning is the free trade agreement that was uh, signed off in 1997 and we're celebrating the 25th anniversary this year. Um, the other one is the agreement to avoid double taxation. Also, it's an it's a agreement that um, was signed off in 1999. And also, I think it's important to take into account the relevance of the relation, the business relationship between Canada and Chile as, as uh, 2000, I mean, 2020, uh, 2021, actually, Canada is uh, Chile's third largest uh, commercial partner, trading more than 31.5 billion dollars in Chile. And on the other side, uh, Chile is Canada's seventh commercial partner. So, so as you can see, we have a very, very close relationship for for a long time, um, and deeply in the different sectors that we will talk uh, later uh, during this uh, webinar. Um, other important aspects of this uh, are, you know, the presence of uh, and the, the importance of these investments in Chile, reflecting uh, uh, in terms of, you know, how much they represent in the total investments in America. So, the whole the total investments of Canada in America, Chile represents thirty four point five percent, and total of the Canadian investments worldwide, Chile represents. Chile represents 11.4 percent. So, so Chile is, is pretty much a, a, a very important uh, business partner for for Canadian business. So, where those companies are present in Chile, as, as we have said before, I mean the main sectors are uh, mining, finance, engineering, energy, utilities, public infrastructure, chemical industry, professional services. Of course, agriculture, as, as we we are part of the free trade agreement in between Chile and Canada, uh, considering all the exports that we get from, from Canada. Um, what we do, uh, what are kind of services that we provide um, for, for our uh, members? You know, um, one, of, one of the, the, the values of this chamber is the, the connection and, and the way that we build relationships between the public and the private sector. So we have straight access to, you know, uh, Ministry of Finance and Economy. Uh, we work very closely with the Invest Chile, is the agency that promotes investments of, of uh, foreign countries in Chile. We work with Pro Chile that promotes uh, investments from Chile and exports from Chile to abroad, uh, considering also including in Canada. Um, of course, we have a very close relationship with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, when it comes to, you know, different issues or situations that our Canadian companies in Chile are facing. Uh, we're, we have a straight contact with them. And of course, we're working very close with the, with the embassy, so we, we team up in those situations. So also, we're very close for uh, a subsectary of economy, economic uh, foreign affairs uh, called SUBRE. Um, that has a straight relationship with uh, with uh, all the commercial agreements that Chile has abroad. Um, so as you can see, we have many connections. We are very uh, supportive to our members uh, as they requested. 
in terms of you know access and uh, relationships when when they need it. Um, also, we we do a lot of face-to-face uh, -face networking activities. We do different kind of sessions in the year with authorities. We do technical seminars. We do webinars. And as we're going through the pandemic, we have changed our way to to interact with our members uh, and with the private and public sector. Um, we like for the most part, you know, try to do in-person activities, but you know, through the reasons that we have. Uh, experience uh, through COVID. I mean, most of our events have been in uh, on webinars, but uh, the the uh, the good thing about that is that anybody can access it, not only from Chile, but for example, from for where you are right now. Um, also, we we permanent do meetings for our partners, internal meetings, just to get you know our members networking. Uh, to to build up relationships and, and connections, I think with uh, that uh, one of the most important things that we, that we believe that that we have to provide value to to our members. Um, also, we do trade visits. Uh, we do it from Chile to Canada, and from Canada to Chile. Um, this is um, as you can see, we're closing TMX in 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 Toronto. It was 2017. We took the Minister of Finance from Chile. All the way to to Canada, we we did this with the support of the Embassy uh, of Canada in Chile and the Embassy of Chile in Canada, and also with the the Board of Trade, uh, the Chamber in Toronto that also was helping us. And we did a visit to to Toronto, to Montreal, and Ottawa. And as well, we have done trade visits to Chile from private companies, family owned or or or. or uh, family-owned companies, um, as well as um, we have done uh, virtual uh, trade visits with the uh, SMEs and especially with the uh, startups uh, from Canada to Chile and from Chile and Canada, um, trying to do an emerging program for them to get part of the ecosystem of venture capital and entrepreneurship in in Canada as well. So we we're you know, in, in, in both ends, like very new business as a means um, to, you know, large, you know, um, companies or, or funds that they're coming to invest in, in large sectors in Chile. Uh, also, we have different platforms to provide uh, information for our partners and members. You know, we have, you know, uh, newsletters, we're in every media that you can imagine, you know, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and we have our news clippers. So we provide news every day for all our members. We try to keep everybody up to date in what's going on in the country. And also, we are not only focused on, on the economic side and business side, but also we focus in, in some political and social uh, aspects. Um, we, uh, we launched a year ago um, an initiative about trust uh, related to the book that was written uh, uh, was written there by the um, the honorable uh, former governor of Canada uh, David Johnston. So we we say who we we worked together with the embassy and the chamber, and we did several uh, different webinars related to the concept of trust based on his book. And this was something very well received by the Chilean authorities and by, by the citizens in this country uh, going through uh, the changes that the country is facing as, as Carlos was mentioned. So, so we do those kind of activities as well. Um, and what other value added initiatives we do? We help companies when they needed to do one-on-one -on -one business meetings. Um, we do working committees by economic sectors to try to develop papers and influence and on laws and be part of those discussions. Um, we have a platform to publish corporate information when our members are launching new products, they're arriving to the country, or they want to inform something to the community. We help them to do that as well. Um, we coordinate work with other Canadian chambers in Latin America, so we try to have a, a little bit of network, network within us. And, uh, and also we do alliances for our members in, in services and, and goods for, for benefits, uh, both uh, uh, entities. This is our board. Uh, we're, we're very honored by the board that we have. Uh, 
Uh, I'm acting as the president uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, Michael Gore, the, the, the Canadian ambassador in Chile. Um, we have many of uh, C-suite executives from large Canadian companies that are present here in the mining sector, engineering, professional services, et cetera, energy. So we're, Canada is very well represented to their companies in Chile and all of them, their gentlemen and women that they have, um, uh, they have a very influential position in terms of the Chilean society and, uh, and the government as well, in terms of facilitate connections and dialogue when, when it's needed. So that's what I want to share with, uh, today regarding the, the chamber. Um, uh, I, 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 later on, I think we're going to have a, a breakout session and I'm happy to answer more questions. Um, as an overview, I think country is a great country to invest. I think it's a very stable, um, uh, it's, it's very aligned with the international laws, uh, promote the free commerce, um, free trade, um, and open economy. Um, so regardless that Chile is going through um, a, a social movement and a change in the government, as Carlos was, was explaining and referring, you know, more and more we see um, a more moderate uh, speech from, from the new authorities. So we have a strong belief, and, and that's what most of the large Canadian investors have said in Chile, that they trust in Chile, that they want to stay in Chile, and they want to keep investing for a long time. So hopefully that um, is, is a good backup for all of you, and I, I see and, and you can see Chile as a next destination for, for your investments and for your products and services. So with that, um, I uh, pass it to you, Gana. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pablo. Thanks for this uh, great overview of the Chamber and uh, its services and the, the great work that uh, uh, you and your members uh, do. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the companies will have uh, more questions to you in the breakout rooms. 